We are following breaking news this morning in San Bernardino County. Sheriff's deputies are on the scene of a helicopter crash. This is near the 15 freeway. That chopper went down just after 10 o'clock last night. Well, breaking news, new information tonight about a deadly helicopter crash in remote San Bernardino County. A friend telling us the people on board were on their way to the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. The CEO of a Nigerian bank, his wife and son are among the six people who died in a San Bernardino County helicopter crash. There's something different about this day. It's not one to be measured by time, but the impact of a tragic helicopter crash that occurred on the 9th of February, 2024, along the California-Nevada border in the United States, with the fatalities of the six people on board, including Dr. Herbert Wigwe, his wife Chizoba Wigwe, and his son, Chizi Wigwe, Mr. Bimbola Gubanjo, and the two pilots. His wife Chizoba Wigwe was the founder and chairperson of Craneberg Construction. She was the beacon of excellence in her field, and was not just a professional at the pinnacle of her career, but also a mentor and a guide to many who had the privilege to know her and work alongside her. Her dedication to her craft, unwavering commitment to excellence, and her ability to inspire those around her to strive for greater heights are just a few facets of her indelible mark on the world. At about 10.08 p.m., the helicopter impacted the terrain south of I-15 near Holloran Springs, California. Holloran Springs is about 75 miles northeast of Barstow. Two crew members and four passengers were on board and were fatally injured. Before I go any farther, on behalf of the NTSB, I'd like to express our deepest sympathies to the families and loved ones of those who lost their lives in this terrible tragedy. Dr. Ajori Sedere Awosika is former chairperson, Access Bank PLC, who shares her account of when she first heard the news. Uh, I was away from Nigeria. I was in Singapore precisely at 2 a.m. Singaporean time. I was called and the person was um, trying to confirm from me and I simply said let me confirm uh, then I said something like oh it's just it's an helicopter crash so okay where are they in the hospital he said he doesn't know because I felt maybe it's a crash that is minor and maybe they were going to land and or take off and maybe they the helicopter, you know, sometimes it can just have a slight. So that was the mind with which I received it. But before that person, barely two minutes after I finished, my phone never stopped ringing until the morning. And it, by then, I was there with my husband, so by then I just couldn't take calls anymore. I actually entered into a shock because I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak and then um, all I could do was to lie down and ask God what's going on because that's where I could go to and I just kept praying and asking God to give me what this is all about that's uh, and I went on like that for up to five days I really wanted to know what went wrong uh, in the spirit realm against what went wrong in the physical. I felt it was totally abnormal and it, it didn't make sense to me. It was a mystery considering that it's just not him, not just his wife, but his son. I'd also had spoken to him before he took off from London to the U.S. Hello. Okay, hello. How are you? Good to see, Good to see you. Good. To see you. Good. Very devastating impact of the banking industry as a whole because he means a lot to all of us. He's been our friends, 
our colleagues, and we did quite a lot of things with him, partnered with him, and um, um, it's a terrible news. This kind of news should not even have even, this thing shouldn't really happen. Uh, how about it's um, a gentleman, a perfect gentleman, how about it's a, a man of impeccable character, is someone who will partner with you, jovial, and discuss with you possibilities of opportunities. And um, uh, in fact, it's too devastating to narrate any stories about Harvard. And it makes all of us weep for him. The people of Asiokwo, on hearing the news, declared seven days of mourning. I am very, very sad. If you can see my heart, you see that my heart is bleeding for the loss of our dearly brother. Caring and honest brother, the way he died, we are not happy. The eye of the community, the hope of many, just go like that. The husband of the widows, father of the fatherless, brother of the brotherless, we are not happy at all. He is a good man. Every Christmas used to bring, every Christmas used to bring trailers of rice, nama goat. Every year he, he told her that I will do this all the days of my life. And even last year Christmas he did. He's a good man. He relates with us as brothers, no matter his level and class. You can see him. You talk with him. He allow you to see. He understands even before you say. He knows where you're going. To. He's a man that has developed. Men in Ikwe, local government, River States, and Nigeria. It is a loss for Ikwe people, River State, and Nigeria. It might interest you to know that during the COVID 19 era, Dr. Herbert Igwe, to Access Bank, because he is the CEO of Access Bank, donated some billions to Nigerian government to cushion the effect of COVID 19. It goes to show that Dr. Herbert Igwe is a true Nigerian. And coming back home, there is a, an ongoing uh, system of a university system that uh, Dr. Herbert Igwe has initiated, popularly called the Uigwe University. If you look at where that university is situated in East Sobo, the ancient kingdom of Igwe ethnic nationality, it used to be a criminal hub. Dr. Dr. Herbert Uge, in his reasoning as a patriotic experiment, decided to develop that place to make it a habitable home. It's just clear that whatever you cannot change, you have to live with it. For us as Ikwere local government people, and as Ikwere people, we are very clear that death came very late. Dr. Abat Wigwe has already planted the seed in us. We are the fearless generation who stand by his legacies and we are not backing down. Abat Wigwe lives in our heart and our spirit forever. For all the visions he has brought to us to develop our people, to develop our people, we we'll stand by those visions, and by the grace of God Almighty, those visions will come to reality.
As a tribute to Dr. Herbert Wigwe, it is essential to acknowledge his profound impact on banking in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. His leadership style, characterized by foresight, resilience, and a deep sense of responsibility, serves as an inspiration to many in the industry. His contributions go beyond financial metrics, embodying a legacy of transformative leadership that has empowered communities, fostered economic growth, and promoted a more inclusive financial system. How about we were, I've, I knew him, I would say, way back uh, 2004, um, when I became governor of Central Bank. Uh, himself and uh, I think he was deputy managing director or executive director of Access Bank then, a uh, small bank, tiny, one of those uh, small uh, banks of one of the 89 banks of those days together with Aiki Mokode who was then the managing director. Uh, our paths didn't cross much, I just knew him. I knew this young guys, these young boys, as it were, so we'll refer uh, to them uh, then. They should probably in their 30s. Uh, by his age, he just was 57, heading to 58 this year. So by then, 2004, he must have been, when we started consolidation, he was 37, 38, uh, probably. And, um, you know, very focused, dynamic, young guys who were determined to survive uh, the huge banking consolidation. And I'm proud to say that Access Bank happened to be one of those um, uh, shining lights uh, of that banking consolidation era. Uh, survived and um, blossomed, uh, as it were. But I really, I mean, so the testimonial about his uh, power, I mean, his contributions to the banking sector, the, the testimonial there is Access Bank that is standing one of the biggest and strongest banks, not only in Nigeria, but also in Africa and the world. Uh, so that's a testament to um, his contributions in the banking sector, the financial system, and also the stock market and general financial system. He's also diversified into other sectors and uh, has remained a champion. Uh, how about we were was, for the period I've known him, exhibited all the signs and all the attributes of a champion. And he was one, an accomplished one, uh, for that matter. Um, so, the banking system, the financial system, lost one of its finest. You know, I think I was in Benin. I just flew in from Benin that uh, day. And I got uh, started getting messages. Have you heard from? Uh, have you seen Herbert? Have you heard about him? Have you heard anything from Herbert? And when people start asking you questions like that, you know, you start suspecting that something could be wrong. So I said, Herbert, no. What I spoke to him last week. What about? And then just a matter of hours, it was all over the news about what. Part. I think it was very tragic, very bad sad day for all of us, you know. And when I say all of us, not just people in this professional um, sector, but mankind, Nigerians, Africans. Because Herbert meant so much, not just to Nigerians, not just to his colleagues in the banking sector, but all across. He's really impacted lives, done great things. The death was quite tragic, extremely unfortunate. You know, his wife, Eba's wife, I brought her back to Lagos about, uh, just in December, you know, in December. Well, she went to Oka Aquaibom, and I was, uh, and so I said, let's go back together with his daughter, you know, we came back together. I saw his son recently at the social gathering, and we hugged and took pictures together. I was totally shattered to hear about the passing of his wife, his son, and even Bimbo Gumbanjo too. That's made their souls rest in peace. May God grant peace, fortitude, strength to those they left behind. Abbas 
colleague at the Access Bank, being born in his family. May God may their souls rest in peace. It's really a sad moment for all of us. The news of uh, the death of uh, Dr. Hubbard, it was disastrous, honestly. Because he's somebody we spoke. I spoke with him on Tuesday. And uh, we were supposed to even see about Friday, only for me to get the information that he was traveling to the US. So, and hearing about the deaths, I was one of the people who were still in doubt that truly such thing happened until when we started getting real confirmation from the site of the crash. It's, it's a disaster to the states. As a person, I honestly have not come over it up to now. No, Herbert was full of life, you know. I only tell him because uh, in those days, you know, I left banking uh, 14 years ago when I was bank CEO. You know, people used to say to me, extremely aggressive. So I used to say, hey, but this is your energy. <laughs> you remind me of Tony Elimelu. And I tell him, whenever I talk to my colleagues at the bank, I always say to them, see what Herbert is doing. So to me, it was a positive uh, competition. It was a shining uh, star for everyone to see and emulate. And um, he did a lot of things, bold things, and indeed transformative things. You know, there are quite some things he's done that um, I dub my heart for him. Has he worked very hard? Extremely. All the time I've worked with him, extremely. Was he working just to make money? No. He was working to, to create a change and better human, better human development process. Does he believe just only in himself? No. He believed God, and he believed that God has enabled him to do whatever he's doing. He also respects talents in people. Anyone that he picks and sees that God has endowed, he respects that talent. He pursues that talent to be, to, to be complementary to his own, to achieve whatever goals or passion he wants to achieve. That's... And he's, he's a very loving person to his family, to his wife, to his children, and to his friends, and to their children. I mean, to my children as well. His love for art was only surpassed by his love for family and community, a cause he championed. I've collected art almost for the better part of my adulthood, just by hanging out with the likes of Kanye B, Ibrahim Oyobisere, and I'm talking about what, in 1989, that kind of time, and watching them paint. It's an integral part of our culture and our, our history. Watching them paint was, was really exciting, and that was what drove me to collecting art. We found out that the young, talented artist did not have any kind of support whatsoever. And so it became a part of our corporate social responsibility. But as time went on, some of these guys became big guys and big players. So we, we started keeping their, their, their artwork, and we also had some from the masters. But in fairness, the big tilt was towards the young um, artists who did not have much support. And, and they've grown over time to become very you know, successful people in their own right. We've run interesting exhibitions uh, with several uh, curators, we've, we've basically helped to sell some of the young, strong artists to um, the international community. Having watched ArtX and knowing the founder, all right, we found it extremely inspiring. And that is why we're also going to support it, you know, in, in, in the years, you know, going into the future. It is great fun. I would mention 
the, his co great contribution to the arts. And I think I should because my daughter is the promoter of Artex Lagos and Access Bank and Access Corporation were the lead sponsors because they also had an interest in the arts. And I said Herbert Wigge was a visionary. He saw the potential for Artex Lagos, which was, a, the, a, which was potentially going to be the largest art fair in West Africa. You see, it's easy to see something when it, it has, has already happened. But when you are the sponsor from the first day, it means you saw it before it was created. You understood, you were visionary, so you could see something others could not see. So you now said, okay, I will back this idea because I can see it already. That's what shows you that somebody is a visionary. Saying, saying yes to what we can all see is easy. If I tell you, give me my watch, I can see it and I take it, it's easy. Saying yes to what has not yet been created is what, it was, it's what is, is a lot more difficult. So that also helps to define Herbert Wigley. Let us take you on a journey towards the fearless pursuit of knowledge. Navigating uncharted territories and taking bold, fearless steps towards a future shaped by courage and discovery as young, ambitious minds begin their quest for learning at a university. Pulling together people of diverse backgrounds to build a fearless generation that will change the future of our country and our continent. Wigwe University awaits a testament to the power of education and unwavering spirit of those who dare to be fearless. Wigwe University, where the fearless make history. A few weeks or months to this tragedy, you know, he needed to do, you know, some adverts of the Wigwe University in Port Harcourt, you know, at Port Harcourt Airport, uh, because that's the gateway to Port Harcourt. And being an international airport, I think the, the, the university is just about, um, they said 15, 20 minutes, I'm not too sure, from the airport. And so he wanted to put a lot of adverts of the Wigwe University to herald visitors into Port Harcourt. So he kept, you know, talking to me about that idea. He's, he's a gifted um, individual, gifted, he's a vision. definitely there's no doubt he's um, a visionary and more recently he's even setting up other initiatives, setting up a university and um, in addition to the fact that he and his colleague had already set up a first class banking, banking industry and um, uh, he's a gentleman that all of us respect a lot and we uh, admire him greatly. We admire his courage, we admire his energy. He's very, very uh, ambitious in doing things. He doesn't have any fear at all and he is a go-getter. He's someone that anyone he does business with can go home and sleep. The loyalty he's shown in his business empire is something that his colleagues, they respect a lot, they admire greatly. We all do respect him and we admire him greatly. One of Dr. Wigwe's friends in his earlier years, Mr. Kunle Lebute, chairman, KPMG Africa, takes a trip down memory lane. After university and enjoyed Cooper's Library and Associates, on the consulting side, and that was on the audit side. So, uh, he must have joined Cooper's I continue around the 86 or 87. I have been there for a few years before then. Um, you know, yes, we we're, were together. We used to go to eat lunch at the Booker together. You know, we went to banking for a year. They went and did a master's. But it was clear in his mind what he wanted to achieve in life. So, I think one, another thing also is about character of focus, what he wanted to achieve in life. And he was a great family man. So, he, you know, Balancing your career, your business, your family, your faith, uh, your social interactions, it's sort of an important aspect of, of human nature. And Herbert was just a you know, complete gentleman when he came to all those things. He was very committed to his alumni, both at secondary school, for example, at Warwick, 
or that was Fika, for example. And even his alumni at Corpus Allegra. So he was a man of very many parts. And he extended his, uh, his reach. Uh, and his network was, was, was very, very large, essentially very large. There's something different about this day. It's not one to be measured by his exit, but by his legacy and the torch is passed on to those he left behind. I will tell you something about being fearless. That powerful state of mind where you refuse to be constrained by the consciousness of your limitations, where you face your challenges as an adventurous quest, focusing on the joys of winning rather than the fear of losing. Many years ago at Cooper's and Library, I could not have foreseen the great future that is now Access Corporation. But education, from formal institutions and from the University of Life, instilled in me all that was required. Each rung of the ladder of success, with its mistakes and joys and sometimes pain, unpacked life lessons that have shown me why and how to impact lives and generations. I'm a man on a quest to touch lives and rewrite the history of Nigeria and Africa. The end is nowhere in sight for our growth and improvement. There is so much more to conquer. As Nelson Mandela once said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. And this is true. My name is Herbert Wigwe, and I am fearless. <laughs>